Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about communist guns that are confused. These are rifles that were originally chambered for 762 by 39 or another uh, caliber like 545 by 39, but basically guns that were designed during the Cold War, used by Cold War countries, communist countries. And these are guns that are based on those, but have been manufactured in the all-American 556. And so I currently have a Chinese AK sitting here to show you guys, but before we get into today's video, please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. A surprisingly small number of you guys actually click that, that subscribe button, so please take a moment and do that because it really helps us out, and then comment down below because we look forward to your comments, but it also helps us with the algorithms. With all that being said, let's get started with today's video. Guys, please swing by and check out Big Daddy Unlimited BDU. They help support us here at the Military Arms Channel with products and things like that so we can continue to bring you content. There's a link in the video description down below that'll take you to the Mac blog and website. Please follow that link and from there you'll find a link to Big Daddy Unlimited and try them out just for 99 cents. You can see what they're all about. In essence, they're just like a big online store that has amazing prices. So please, again, check out BDU. This is the Chinese 84S. Now this gun is pretty desirable by today's standards, but when these guns were being imported, they were considered to be junk. I was watching a Russian channel recently, and it's a gentleman that works or worked for Ismosh, and he was talking about the worst AKs on the market, and the Chinese AKs were actually mentioned in the series. And I thought that was pretty funny because today people will pay an outrageous amount of money to get a Chinese AK. But when I was a kid, like I said, they just weren't all that valuable. They were selling them at gun shows for less than 300 bucks and ammunition was less than hundred dollars a case. That was for the 762 by 39. So the 556 guns were brought in and these were made in China specifically for export primarily to the US market. And it's typical Chinese quality, which isn't really all that bad, but you will find guns with canted sights. The Chinese really enjoyed putting hoods on their front sight, so if you have to adjust that front sight up for elevation, uh, it gets really close to that uh, hood and makes for a really awkward sight picture. I prefer AKs that have the open front sight with the protective ears, not the full hood. But in general, they, they weren't bad guns. But again, they were considered junk and even the Russian gentleman that has the channel that talks about bad AKs specifically called out the Chinese AK, showed some pretty interesting pictures in his video of Chinese workers putting these things together in what looks like a root cellar in somebody's house. Really, really bad working conditions. But I really enjoyed the 84S, and there is a fixed stock folder and other variations of it, but um, I really enjoyed it because it's a fun gun to shoot. The 5.56 works really, really good in the AKs. I do want to quickly mention that we are shooting some Federal 55 grain ball. We want to thank our friends over at Federal for supplying the ammunition to the channel for free. It does help us out here. And uh, yeah, I know ammunition is really tight right now. We're right in the middle of the ammunition panic buy of 2021, and we're even short on ammunition. So we're only going to fire 10 rounds to show you the basic function of the gun. AKM stamped throughout, really actually good looking wood. I've always liked the way the Chinese wood looked. It, it holds up well and it keeps a nice color to it. And I have quite a number of pre-ban AKs like this from China. The magazines becoming scarce, hard to find, and you'll probably pay a hundred bucks or more just for one of these magazines these days. So I got pretty lucky buying this gun a long time ago. And that's one of the things that's really interesting about buying guns like this is they typically turn out to be pretty good investments until the government bans them and makes them illegal, then they're only valuable on the black market, assuming there would be a black market. You catch my drift. Anyway, let's do a little bit of shooting with the rifle here really quick. Yeah, I'll just hold it up. I've never had one of my Chinese AKs break on me, but then again, I don't shoot them all that much. So this one is hitting just a little bit low, so I'd have to bring that front sight up and mess with my front sight picture. That's one of the reasons why I've never uh, perfectly zeroed the gun. Good function, same ejection as you would see with any AK, which is throwing the spent cases into orbit. 
but just a beautiful rifle overall. I do enjoy the Chinese AKs, even though they're considered to be low quality by apparently AK experts. Let's take a look at the next firearm. The next rifle I want to show you guys is based on a Saiga, and this is imported from Russia, so the Russians definitely wanted to get into the AK import game, and they made them in a bunch of different calibers, and they made sporter versions and things like that. Matter of fact, this gun would have come into the country as a sporter and had been converted into the configuration that you see here. This is a very early definitive arms magwell conversion gun. This is a gun that you know, the base rifle was maybe $300 back when I bought it. And now these base rifles are $3,000 at today's market prices. It's just insane what has happened to the price of AKs. We had the importation of the Russian AKs banned because of sanctions, and we'll probably never see that sanction lifted. Uh, once the, the anti-gun forces get an anti-gun policy in place, it tends to stick. So sadly, we won't see many more of these and the prices of them are only gonna go up, but that's one of the reasons why um, I don't like people <laughs> doing what I did to this gun and butchering, uh, you know, import rifles and like Mosin Nagants and things like that. They will eventually dry up and their collector's value will skyrocket, but not for people that butchered them. And I'm talking to you, my dear friend, Iraq veteran 8888. <laughs> so anyway, I'm guilty of it. This gun I modified quite heavily. So Definitive Arms did their Magwell conversion on the gun. So it uses standard AR-15 magazines, has a last round bolt hold open feature, which you'll see function here in a moment. I have a primary arms red dot sight on top. I have, and I forget who made this, but it was a guy that was active duty in the army. Uh, I had a couple of them. This is the only one I still have remaining, but it's a side charging handle. And all it's doing is grabbing the front of that bolt carrier. And so when you take the top cover off, it doesn't change anything internally on the gun. It's just grabbing the front of this bolt carrier and charging it that way. I thought it was really ingenious. So it's just one of the many modifications I've done to it. It also has a Midwest Industries rail system on it. And yeah, this was just a fun gun. This has a, uh, an adapter on here for an M4 style stock. Ugh. It's kind of sticky. <laughs> and then, what is this, a fab defense grip? I don't even know who made this grip, but kind of an ergonomic type grip. So again, it uses standard Stenag magazines, has standard AK fire controls, but I do have the option with this one of charging it with the left-hand side. I love this rifle. And again, it's a very early definitive arms Magwell conversion gun. This is when I saw him posting over on AR15.com about wanting to make these. And uh, yeah, I was really excited by that because I've always loved AKs. Isn't that cool how the bolt locks open? So now you can drop the magazine out and put another magazine in. And then on this side, we have a bolt release that will drop the bolt. Pretty cool functionality and quite the upgrade to the uh, Russian import Sega 5.56 rifle. All right, so definitely one of my favorites. Let's see what else I brought out this afternoon. Everybody loves the next rifle, but some folks misidentify it as being part of the AK family, and it is not part of the AK family. As a matter of fact, the only thing it has in common with most AKs is the caliber that it, that it chambers. The gun I'm talking about is the VZ-58. This rifle was originally used by the Czech military during the Cold War, but it's been imported into the United States for quite some time. Before that, I think it was Ohio Ordnance Works was taking parts kits and manufacturing receivers and assembling those from parts kits. And then we actually had uh, a couple of different companies spring up to actually bring the guns in from overseas. And this is one of those firearms. This one is chambered in 5.56 because that's why it's in the video, which makes it even more unique. This gun, on it, even in its military, counterpart in the 7.62x39 counterpart, makes use of a, a machined steel receiver and has a stamped top cover, which is only back here, has open bolt with part of that being a stripper clip guide built into the top of the bolt. So you can see when the gun cycles, it has a completely open action. Also operates with a short stroke gas piston system, very similar to the SKS. And this is a rifle that the Czechs developed because they didn't want to adopt the AK-47. This rifle is smaller than the AK-47. It's more narrow. It's just 
thinner, more handy, just a, a really neat rifle. The original military version would have had a slightly shorter barrel. They didn't have 16 inch barrels, but for the US market, they have to be made 16 inches. But yeah, just a really, really neat Cold War era firearm. These can be had with accessory rails and RS Regulate does make a mount for this gun and you can put a red dot sight on it. I have one for it. I chose not to put it on here for the purposes of this video. It uses its own proprietary magazines. And again, some Federal 55 grain ball. Such a smooth action. You never know if the thing even picked up around. <laughs> Looks like it did. The, uh, the safety is right here. So when it's down and blocking your finger, you'll feel it. You'll know that it's unsafe. To brush it off, you just flip it forward. Last round, hold open feature. Very short, crisp recoil impulse. Probably the most brisk recoil impulse of any of the guns I have out here this afternoon, chambered in 5.56, but still a very pleasant rifle to shoot. Very, very cool looking gun. This one has polymer furniture on it. You'll find the military ones with the beaver barf stocks, or you can find them with polymer. But uh, this one was definitely made for the US market, for export anyway. They may export it to other places in the U.S., but a very, very neat gun, very rare and hard to find. So if you find one in stock, don't hesitate. Click the buy button, although I don't know what these things are selling for at today's prices, which is probably pretty ridiculous because they were already expensive and hard to find to begin with. The next rifle is an SBR, so this one does require paperwork. That's because the barrel is shorter than 16 inches. But this is an AKM, and it's made in Bulgaria. It's a Bulgarian 106 UR. It was originally manufactured as a pistol, but it is a factory SBR that we picked up through Copper Custom. And it does feature the side folding stock, what we call the hobo muzzle brake on the end. And of course it hinges open like any other crank in 545. So really the only difference this gun has over its 545 counterpart is the fact that it's chambered in 556. Has the accessory rail on the side, all that good stuff. It does use its own magazines. And these are some Bulgarian Circle 10 mags, waffle mags. And I really enjoy this little gun. Now the sights with my old eyes are getting harder to use. It uses a V-notch that sets fairly close to the shooter's face, very much like a pistol sight. So you have a V-notch in the rear, and we have a front post out here. That's a very coarse sight picture. Some folks can shoot these things amazingly well. I'm not one of them. Maybe when I was younger, I could have, but uh, it's still a lot of fun to shoot. All the controls are what you would expect for an AK and just a beautiful, beautiful gun. Yeah, I love shooting this, this rifle quite a bit. They do make mounts, by the way, for this thing, uh, RS Regulate, that will set a red dot far enough back where it won't interfere with this rear sight that sets kind of forward here. A lot of times the red dot sights will sit over the ejection port, but they do make a mount that you can put a red dot sight back here. I've just not used it or bought one yet. I may never. I'm trying to learn how to use these sights. Not too bad, I hit him every time. <laughs> Very muted recoil impulse. Uh, the, the muzzle brake is quite unique. Uh, the sound signature seems a little bit different through these ears than a standard 5.56 rifle, but simply a beautiful SBR and definitely one of my favorites. Have you noticed something about my favorites? It seems like I have an awful lot of them. <laughs> so the rifle I showed you previously was made in Bulgaria and was made on a stamp receiver and was a crank one of the short little AKs. The Bulgarians absolutely love their milled receivers. So the SAM-5 rifle that I have here in front of you now is a milled receivered 5.56 rifle. Now the SAM-5 showed up on the US market 
and quickly disappeared. It almost seems like Arsenal only imports a handful of these things, teases people with them, and then they completely disappear. And then, of course, the prices on the uh, used market or on the gun broker market skyrocket as a result. Then you throw in the COVID mess and the recent uh, election, and you have a perfect storm for these things being just ridiculously priced, even if you can find one. Hopefully, the market settles down at some point in the future. But these milled receiver guns are absolutely beautiful. Arsenal has always done a really good job with their milled guns. I've always enjoyed shooting them. I have several in my collection I've picked up over the years. And this 5.56 rifle is a really neat addition. On the left-hand side of the receiver, we do have an optics mount, so you can put optics on it, which is a nice touch. It has a fixed stock, polymer furniture, and it uses the same magazine as the rifle I showed you previously the little crank off. And I'm doing the air quotes every time I say crank off because I know it's not a technical term. So the magazines are interesting when you talk about 5.56 AKs. Not all AKs will use the same 5.56 magazines. For example, trying to run this in the Chinese rifle or vice versa, you'll probably run into problems where they just simply won't work. So each of the 5.56 AKs generally have their own magazines, Galils, this rifle, Chinese AKs, things like that. Now, some people can modify magazines to make them work across platforms. That's not something I do. I try to, when I buy the guns when they're available, I also pick up magazines for them, knowing that in the future, they're gonna be hard to find. Nice thing about a machined receiver at AK is they just all have that typical buttery smooth action. Now, that's not to say you can't get an AKM with a stamped receiver, uh, you know, rifle that had, that isn't buttery smooth, but it just seems like the milled guns always have that really, really smooth action to them. We recently did a video about the mini barrel pistol that was being imported by Arms of America and being retailed through Atlantic Firearms. Well, before that pistol came to the US market, IO Inc. imported this rifle as the Archer, and this is a Polish barrel rifle. Now, granted, this gun came to be after the fall of the Soviet Union and the collapse of the Warsaw Pact, but this gets an honorable mention because it is an AK, and I love this gun. This is easily one of the best, if not the best, 5.56 AKs on the market. Now, I do want to correct something I said in the mini barrel video. Uh, you know, the Tantal that I had shown in that video, which uh, was a predecessor to this one, had a selector lever over here, and it's built off a parts kit, and that's why that selector lever was in the parts kit. It turns out these do also have that same capability of select fire on the left-hand side in their military trim. So you would have the ability to select the fire mode semi-automatic or fully automatic with a lever over here, and this just becomes a safety lever. So I wanted to correct that uh, misspoken thing that I made in that last video. And I just wanted to show this thing because it's so cool. Now, many times you'll see this thing uh, in Polish military service. It's still in service. It's being replaced by the MSBS or the Grot, but you'll still see this thing in Polish service. Uh, you can take this top rail off by just undoing this lever, lifting this up and off, and you can just run it with sights and no rail, or you can put the rail on it and run it with an EOTech. It has an EOTech on it because, like I said previously, uh, these seem to be really popular in Poland, and I've seen a lot of these rifles in Polish military use with EOTechs on them. The gun is just extremely well built. It does not have a folding stock. It looks like it, but it's more like an M4 with just a collapsible stock, and it's just a really, really cool Firearm shoots extremely well, has its own magazines, which are kind of translucent. And again, I think this is probably by far my favorite 5.56 AK. Yep, such a nicely made rifle. Very, very good looking gun. Hopefully these will make their way back into the country. Right now we just have the pistols, which are great SBR projects. But um, yeah, a lot of folks are gonna want these now because the mini barrel pistols are coming in the country.
So in today's video, I showed you a number of different com block era weapons. These are firearms that were developed during the Cold War by the you know, satellites of the Soviet Union and stuff like that, and they're neat guns to collect. So why would you buy one in 5.56? Well, first of all, they make great collectibles. So few people buy them in 5.56, surprisingly. So you, you definitely can make a good investment there. They're definitely fun to shoot. If you're an AR-15 shooter, your primary caliber is 5.56. It makes a whole lot of sense when you go buy a VZ-58 or an AK or something like that to also get it in 5.56, then you have that ammunition compatibility. Plus, it puts a little bit of freedom in a communist gun, and you can't beat that. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. Become part of our family. There's a link down below. Once you become part of the family, you get early release videos. You get to see them before the rest of the world. You get direct access to me. I answer all private communications. We do blog posts. And we have a brilliant, just a wonderful community of folks there that interact with each other on a daily basis. Again, link down below. And also, please, right here on YouTube, there's a little join button in the video player you're watching right now. Just click that join button and support us right here on YouTube. Last but not least, guys, swing by, check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support. And we'll talk to you guys soon. <sighs> the one gun they should have put in Cold War, Call of Duty, and they didn't.